For over a hundred years, British Vogue has influenced modern fashion trends and featured some of the biggest names in the UK. And now Cho Minardi becomes the first ever black British female to lead the magazine many consider to be the holy grail of fashion. It wouldn't be offices without Vogue everywhere. Yeah, exactly. What reaction do you think you'll have when you see your cover? Emotional. I'm really looking forward to it. I feel really proud of it. What was your inspiration for this cover? I'm super excited and proud to say that it's FK Twigs. She's wearing this amazing Loewe dress. It has a pierced front, so it's a nod to her rebellious spirit. It was a cold day, it was right before Christmas. We were outside, so I was worried that someone was going to reveal the cover because there were people walking <gasps> by and we did our best to keep things contained. You've got some big shoes to fill with Edward Ennefel just leaving. I do. It's always a collaboration with you. That's what I love from beginning to end. If you don't know, that's Rihanna. <laughs> he was so great at taking risks and knowing exactly who the right person was to celebrate at the right time. Your new title is Head of Editorial. Yeah. Edward Ennefels was Editor-in-Chief. Why is it different? My role reflects more how, how you know, how an editor operates now. It's much more about content because I'm overseeing Instagram, TikTok, our video presence. And so I think head of editorial content makes much more sense in the way that we work. In this new generation, you know, they're, the first emotional connection they're gonna have with a brand like Vogue is through the screen of their phones. Is that admitting that magazines are dead? No, not at all, because I think, oh my gosh, like a Vogue cover still means something, right? A print issue still means something. and. Um, that is part of the, like a series of moments and stories that we get to tell every month. The 2024 report, the British Fashion Council found 9% of executive roles are held by people of colour. That's below their 25% target. 2018, you said, too often I look around and I'm one of only a handful of black and brown faces. Do you think times have changed? I still feel that racism is a systemic problem and it's not something that we can solve overnight. Too often you see black and brown women specifically not set up for success. They're put into these big roles and they're expected to sort of change, you know, move heaven and earth. And it's really not fair. But I'm encouraged by the conversations that we're having and the changes that we're making. Within the last few years, the fashion world seemed to embrace more models of all shapes and sizes. But recently, the industry has been accused of going in reverse. Coming back from the Paris shows, it felt like this conversation about size inclusivity had, um, had taken a back seat and people were kind of relying back on old habits. And seeing this cult of thinness come through again was a little upsetting. So why do you think that backslide is happening with size, though? Ozempic, potentially, you know, trends cycle through in fashion and we need to make sure that size inclusivity isn't a trend. Looming large over Vogue is Anna Wintour, the editor-in-chief of the American edition since 1988, and now the head of the parent company Condé Nast, making her a titan in the fashion world. What advice has Anna Wintour given you? She's very hands-on, so yeah. she's given me lots of advice and help me every single step of the way. I don't think that woman sleeps. I will email her at 3 a.m. She will email me back at 3.03 a.m. It's incredible. And I know that the door's always open for me to ask her questions. And I always say we're just trying to keep up with her and it's pretty impossible. <laughs> The future of British Vogue is now in Choma's hands at a time when the dominance of print magazines continues to fade and the digital space becomes more competitive, a daunting task ahead for her tenure at the top.